All right. Now, this being black, it's pretty hard to make a mark on it. I tried even scratching one, but since it's a textured finish, it's hard to see. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do. You could put masking tape over this and make your marks on masking tape and uh, just drill right through the masking tape and uh, pull, peel the masking tape off when you're done. That's probably what a smart person would do. I'm just going to use my drill. It's well, I need it to be about 19 and 3 8, so I'm just going to... I'm just going to make my marks with my drill. I'm just going to wing this. Uh, here. Not many eyeballs going to be looking at this, so we'll, we're just going to we're just going to go for broke here and kind of wing it. Eyeball measurement, pretty much. It's about 19 and 3 eighths. We're just guessing. Got it fairly well centered, and that's the way we're going to do it. So I marked it by drilling it. Now I'm going to drill them through. I can also make these holes bigger if I need to to get a little bit of slack to get this exactly where I want it. I could probably even get away of drilling those holes out to about a half an inch and using washers. They're black screws. It's a black base. It's overhead. I really doubt if anyone's going to look at it. So now I'll measure the back side and uh, put screws in, uh, screw holes in approximately the same place. through the unit without the threads biting but half the threads of the screw bite into the, the roof material so let's see if the screw slips through if it doesn't I'm gonna get a larger and it slips through so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a smaller drill bit in the drill and we're gonna drill some holes and we're gonna install it And a lot of times dogs will get in your way. And don't think that's not a disadvantage. You get a dog in your way and it can really slow things down. It can even screw things up. So that's something you want to be aware of. A lot of times people don't even have dogs when they, when they work on things and it's probably a good idea. Okay, it looks like I drilled those first two screws in the right place. Let's get my back ones are in the right place. That dog thinks he's going to go for a ride. Um, this dog likes to ride. All right, I want to go with the smallest drill possible, drill bit possible, so I can have as much bite with my screw as I possibly can have. This would be a job that would be much easier if you had a helper and not the canine variety either um, a human helper would really come in handy on a job like this but I don't have any so that's what we're going to do but here goes nothing we're going to rock this I'm going to put in one screw Like I expected, that rip was hollow. So we'll drive, drill one, drive one screw through, and then we'll check everything and uh, see if I got everything aligned properly. Probably a darn good idea. If I spent more time checking fitment and measuring and things of that nature than just winging it and doing their hell of it. I want to get the job done. I've paid the price before for playing the game like this. But I've also come out on top playing the game like this, so we'll see how things go. There's our screw. We'll put that in. 
That gets us a, gives us a point of reference there. Looking good there. That hole there lines up. That hole lines up relatively well. That hole lines up relatively well. So we'll drill the rest of the holes. And we'll put in the rest of the screws. And then we will hook up our electricals. So if these screws ever loosen up, I can either epoxy them in, some other type of glue, put them in, or I could use larger screws. Um, there's a lot of options, but. We're going to go with the option of putting more screws in last, because I'd have to take that radio unit out to put in screws up there and drill the holes at this point. And I'm just not really in the mood to do that. The whole idea of this, I spent $300 on this thing. Uh, you can get a radio for about 100 bucks, and I could have built that enclosure. The whole idea was to have this quick and easy. And if I uh, have to tear the uh, stereo unit apart just to do the job, it's no longer quick or easy. So. We're just going to rock it the way it is. Okay, hope for the best. Okay, made it past the first hurdle without any major screw ups. No bolts sticking through, screw sticking through the roof. So we're good there. At this point, we can remove our temporary bracing. The next thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to route this wire down to the power source into a ground. And uh, along the way, I'm going to remove this ignition switch if I can. See if I can have it where. I can hook up the headlights so they only work when it's on hot. And we'll hook up the headlights so they only work when the key's on and on, and we'll hook up the radio so it works all the time. All right. We got a dog in our way right now. I don't know how long that'll last. But uh, this brings back memories of putting in the headlights. I had to remove this dash panel. So that's what I'm going to do next. It's got some buttons covering some screws. I have to pop them out. Oh, there goes the dog, so now they might be able to see things a little better. That side. So, well, you still got a dog. Still have a dog. Um, how about the dog going somewhere else, huh? How about if the dog was somewhere else? Wouldn't that be ideal? Let's see what we can do. Put the cat out and move the dog. Give him a treat here. Throw the treat over there. And then the, that keeps the dog busy. Yeah. So, a lot of times you gotta get rid of those dogs. So, take off this dash panel. These little buttons covering some screws here. Let's get those buttons pried off. You can. Take out the screws that hold it on, and as I recall, this just tips out. You can't get it all the way out unless you tear even more stuff apart. But just need to tip out the top to access it. That's really all there is to it. If you want to get your just hook up a radio and just have it hooked to the battery, which I am doing. 
you don't have to do this step I'm doing here. I'm exploring the possibility of hooking up the headlights so they only work when the key's on out. Now, this should pull out. And if it doesn't, I will have to go back and do some further research. There we go. I think all I have to do, rather than disconnect the wire going to the battery for the uh, headlights, I think all I have to do is clip it and then hook it right to one of these two wires, which will make things a little bit easier. And then I could just leave that wire there if I so desire. Let me get my test light. All right. Now, who knows what's a ground on this machine and what's not. You can figure that out. Nothing. Nothing. Oh, got something there, don't we? Huh. That's something. Nothing now, though. Hope I didn't blow a fuse. Hope I didn't blow a fuse. I certainly did. That's exactly what I did. I blew a fuse somewhere. I'll have to see where the fuse is. Okay. Well, this is going to take some research, so I'll shut the camera down for the time being. All right, here we are. Got her kind of torn apart here right now, but what I wanted to get done here was have the situation where the radio would work at all times, regardless of the key position, and the headlights only work when the key's on. I got that second part taken care of, uh, the headlight only working when the key's on. Uh, I got the headlight switch pulled right now, and the front lights are working. And our back lights are working. So we're good there. Now, I hooked it up to the key switch instead of directly to the battery. So, let's just take a look here, there it is. I'll turn off the key switch, Ah, oh, see? Key, key on, key off. I think that makes a lot more sense, okay? So that's where we're at. Now the next step is gonna be hooking up my radio wire, which comes from there, down through there. Ah, uh, I got a little bit extra, but I'm gonna, what I did here is, the original tail light, well, head and tail light wiring went to the battery, it comes out here. I'm going to leave the ground for the uh, tail lights, but the, I'm going to use the positive for the head and tail lights for the radio now. And uh, now the positive wire from the uh, switch for the headlights, I just have running right over here to the key switch, okay? And that uh, pole right there lights up when you turn the key to run. And also a couple of things here, when you're, when you're doing wiring, and boy, I learned this the hard way, make sure you leave enough slack in your wiring uh, for when you pull something apart, you have room to take it, take it apart when you work on things. If the wires are tight, tight, you won't be able to pull out a dash panel and service it. Um, the very first truck I ever owned, I had a 58 Chevy pickup. And the guy must not own the wire cutters because there was just tons and tons of wire under the dash, a whole bunch of Mickey Mouse uh, Home, home jerry rig wiring on it but tons and tons of loose wire and just like rolls of it so I cut that out and neatened it up I was so proud of myself because I didn't have any wasted wire it looked nice and neat under the dash but then I had to repair something and then oh my god uh, then that's when you run into problems when you don't have any room to uh, to work on something because you can't pull out a gauge or a switch or something because the wires are are so tight. You want to have a little bit of uh, slack in them. Uh, obviously you don't want to have feet of extra wire you don't need, but you also don't want to have it too tight. Also you, when you have something with a fuse, you want to have the fuse easily accessible. I'm not really too thrilled about how accessible I made that. I'll have to pull out a screw on each side to get to that. I don't think I'm ever going to blow it, but it, you know, I, I've never blown the fuse yet, so I got it tucked under there. It's a little less convenient. Uh, the old fuse for the headlights will now be the new fuse for the radio that's there so kind of switch the basically I switched the positive uh, power sources around for the headlights and the radio so I will finish uh, wiring this up and then we'll see if the if the radio works okay so basically what I did here is I switched the uh, positive wire for the headlights the circuit and I used it for the radio circuit 
and I just went for my headlight circuit, I went directly to the key switch with the inline fuse uh, between them. Uh, yeah, as you hear, right there's my fuse. So we got a fuse in there, and we basically, uh, to run the headlights, and we robbed off the old headlight positive wire to run the radio. Now, <coughs> there is a heavier gauge on the radio wire than the headlight wire, okay? But I'm not worried about that because the headlights had a 15 amp fuse in them where the radio only has a 10 amp fuse. I just think they, it looked like some pretty heavy gauge wire. They may they're just doing that to impress customers, uh, the outfit that sells these radio and radio consoles, but you don't need that heavier wire for a radio and uh, we got a 10 amp fuse in it. Uh, this finer wire was running the headlight circuit and that had a 15 amp fuse on it, so I'm not the least bit concerned about it. So, we got her all hooked up. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> um, it's got the switch on it here. And you can turn that off. That turns off the radio, okay? But one thing that's kind of cool for a golf cart, it's got this other switch over here and it turns on little dome lights, so that is kind of cool. All right, and this thing here, uh, it will run regardless of whether I have the key on or not. See, I've turned the key, the key was off, turn it on. It does make a darn bit of difference. So this runs all the time. Uh, now here we got some lights that someone could accidentally leave on during the day, but they are LED. Uh, it's gonna take a long time to kill the battery of some LED, uh, two little LED lights. So I'm not worried about that. But now we can take the keys out. Let's say we had this at a campground and uh, we're just cranking the radio near a campfire in the dark. We can just take the key out. We don't have to worry about anybody taking the key or taking the golf cart. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good deal. And I got her hooked up, she's running. I don't have any music on it right now because, you know, YouTube doesn't like you playing music, right? So, but I'll just to show that it works. There's some audio. Yeah. Well, yeah, well. Al Haji, don't say anything against coffee. That's something on public radio. I'm sure there's not going to be any copyright problem there. Nobody listens to that anyway. So, the job is just about done. Now all I have to do is tuck these wires back in, zip tie them up so everything looks nice, and uh, we'll call this project good. All right, we're pretty well along here now. Uh, down to the point where I just got to tuck the wires away, zip tie stuff up, and put the dash panel back in. Um, I had to make a, a mount for my antenna. I, this was a piece of that angle iron with a whole bunch of holes in it. Okay, I just smashed it flat. And I cut a section out of the top. Because I'm not a big fan of using, uh, drilling holes and stuff I don't have to. I like to use existing holes and existing bolts. So I'm gonna put that in there like that. That's why I have that cut out fit right there. My antenna fits right there. I've tested it out as far as reception is concerned. It, uh, it gets just fine reception. I grounded off the corners on the bracket here so if anybody hit them, they wouldn't get hurt. And uh, I think that's gonna work really good. And it's kind of concealed so it's not gonna get torn off when you get under, go under a tree limb. But it's also not in the way of passengers' heads and stuff getting in. So we'll get these wires tucked away. We'll get that dash panel back in and then this job will be done. Okay, there you have it, sports fans. It is a done deal. Everything's all put back together. And, uh, oh God, I think she looks pretty good. Radio works all the time with the keys on or not. There we go. We'll have to tune in the station again because I disconnected the battery and I lost all my memory. But you get the idea. So, that's a good deal. Works whether the key is on or not. We're the headlights. And you'll see the reflection up here on the, maybe, maybe not. But turn it on the sea. Turn off the key, headlights turn off. Turn on the key, headlights turn on. You can see from the reflection on that table. So, this is a done deal. Um, I think it's fairly decent looking. Um, 
Not too bad looking. Of course, there are some things like your antenna wire. I want you can't shorten an antenna wire. I suppose you put a cover over if you wanted, but then we got the wire going down the roof post to the to the power supply in the ground. But from a vantage point of the passerby, um, I don't think she looks too bad. Doesn't look too bad. You can't even really tell it's had a radio put on it until you hear it. And that sounds good enough for me. And all we got to do is give this a wash job and we can take her camping. So that's the end of this video. I hope you folks liked it. If you did, make sure to you know give her a thumbs up and share it with your friends and uh, subscribe. Thank you again and we'll see you next time on the Fix Yourself channel.